Welcome back to Alchemist Camp. This time we have the answer to challenge number two. If you don't recall, challenge number two was about extending the word counter we built last time. This word counter takes a file name from the user and it opens it up, splits it into words with this kind of hairy regex that we made last time, and it returns the count of the total number of words in the file. The challenge was to extend it so that it could also count the lines or count the characters in the file, and it would do whichever the user asked for. There were a bunch of ways to solve this. I'm hoping it drove some of you to the docs, but if it didn't, please take a check after this video, especially enum.each and enum.at. They're just super, super foundational, useful things. All right. Lots of ways to do it. The way I did it was this. Word count ultimate edition. As before, we prompt the user for a file name, but we also have this H for help option. We trim the string as before. Then the rest of the program is inside an if do else end block. Basically, if the file name they put in is just an H, then we output this help. Notice that we're using a here doc syntax, so it's triple quotes to start it, then a new line, and then triple quotes on a new line to end it. That way we don't have to put quotes around each, each line here, we don't have to concatenate strings, we can just throw out that whole chunk of text as one big string. And the else is what happens if they actually did put in a file name, or at least if they put in something other than an H. So the first thing we do is we split it into parts. And we split on a dash. That's because this dash is used for the flags. This isn't the perfect way to split. Like there could be a problem if there's a dash in the file name. And we could fix this by using a regular expression and just splitting on white space and then a dash. I'll leave that for, for you to figure out. In this case, we split on the dash, we're gonna end up with a list like this, sumfile.txt, and then there's still a space because there was a space before the dash and then lc. So it's a list with, with two elements in it. List.first just gets the first element in a list. That's some file.txt. And enum.at is very similar. Enum.at will get the nth element out of a, a list. It starts counting at zero. So if we did enum.at parts comma zero, it would get us this. If we did enum.at parts comma one, it gets us this LC for, from the flags. Let's see here. So yeah, we get the first part and we trim it. That's to get rid of this, this space. So it's now just the file name, some file.txt. And we do some other things, but a little bit further down, we do the exact same stuff with the file name as we did in the original program. And we split the string using the same regex we did last time. We have the same filters we did last time. So that's all the same. What's different is the flags, first of all. So we already said this part matches uh, the LC in this case, matches whatever flags they put in. We have a case statement. So if the flags they put in match nil, that means they didn't put any flags in at all and the list only had the file name. There was no next element and in that case, we set the flags to just a list of W. And that's because W is for word, and the default behavior is to display the word count. If they did put in some flags though, then we've got some characters such as LC from this example. We split on nothing. Splitting on nothing will split a, a string into all of its constituent characters. And there's also an empty string left over at the end. Let me show you an IEX. 
So we'll say my string is horse. String.split str. That's the standard split. So that's splitting on white space. There is no white space. Doesn't get split. Split on nothing breaks it into individual letters. And then there's there's another empty one here because we're splitting between the E and the end of the string. So we don't exactly want that. So we filter it out right here. Same kind of filter we used last time. So these cares would just be L and C or whatever combination of L, C and W the user put in and flags. All right, uh, we already covered this. Splitting a file into lines is not too hard. Basic idea is you just want to split on new lines. The only reason for this complexity is some computers or some systems use a backslash R, which is a carriage return instead of a new line. And then others use both a slot backslash R and a backslash N. And this way it just supports whichever of them it happens to be. Um, you may remember this vertical pipe syntax for like a, an either or matcher in a regular expression. So this will match any one of these three things, either a backslash R backslash N or a backslash N or a backslash R. We don't have a plus here like before, and that's because we don't want to match multiple new lines that are together. For example, there's a new line between here and here, and there's another new line between here and here. Even though the two lines are next to each other in the file, we don't want to match the two of them as a group and only count it as one new line, because line 25 is a line, it's just empty. Counting the characters is very straightforward as well. We're splitting the body on nothing, much like we did up here with, uh, with the flags that were passed in. So that will uh, split into each individual character. And then we filter out the empty string again, just like we did above. All right, next thing we do is we use enum.each. Enum.each is one of the most important things that is available in the standard library or in many standard libraries, in fact. Enum.each executes a function that you give it and it executes it on each element in the enumerable set or list or whatever, whatever enumerable thing you give it. So this one's a list. So it will execute this function on and back in our example would execute it on the character l and then would execute it on the character c each time through we've got a case statement if the flag is l we put the number of lines we say lines and then the number of lines if it's w we put words and the number of words and same deal with c and characters if it's something else, like say it's an empty string or someone puts in a, a flag that doesn't exist, then we just don't do anything. Uh, that's pretty much how it works. Let's have a look at it in action. All right, so we will run Elixir. Use Elixir to run the script, I should say. Ultimate Edition. And first, let's just try the help, make sure that works. Yep, that works. Let's try a file name that doesn't exist. This should crash. It does, very good. Let's try greeter with, without any sort of flag. So greeter.ex, 48 words, okay. Let's try greeter and we'll just ask for the line count dash L 12 let's see greater and it's 12 lines okay very good let's uh, let's count everything in its own file word count ultimate edition 
I love how ridiculous that name is. And we'll get L W N C. 41 lines. That is correct. 159 words. 1018 or 1118 characters. Those are a little harder to verify, but they all look right. So there you have it. This is how you make a word count ultimate edition if you feel the, the world needs such a thing and you've hamstrung yourself and decided not to use mix, uh, which I will be covering in future lessons, by the way. Don't worry. I'm just doing it uh, kind of the, the simplest possible way first, and we'll just keep picking up more and more tools and, uh, and uh, make better and better stuff as we go along. So if you have any questions, throw them in the comments. Uh, once again, if you haven't subscribed yet, I highly suggest you do so you get future lessons. And until then, code on.